I am Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm so glad to reach you. I want to announce to you that apart from the award I'm going to receive in Lusaka, Zambia, between 13th to 16th of November. Just this morning, I received a message from the African Child Foundation giving me another award on the 7th of November for my mentorship role in the Niger Delta. Remember, I have mentorship groups in several countries of the world that run into hundreds of people. And uh, this is what I've been doing for a long time. And um, the Evolved Group, Charles Awuzie, recently gave me an award for my mentorship role. He told them in the audience that I've been mentoring him since he was a young man. This is what I have been doing, taking care of young people and mentoring young people and providing leadership for them. I want to thank the African Child Foundation for giving me this award. I also want to encourage you, if you are in Lusaka, um, Livingstone, and anywhere in Zambia, you can reach out to me on plus 234-7052-13676. And I will send you a message on the venue and the dates will be in Lusaka so that we can meet one-on-one -on -one and share fellowship. I also want to announce to you that I have paid 14 million to the Zimran Medical Center at Imwetinya Street of Uwasota. And they've placed order for the materials they will use to do the surgeries for Pastor. It is well. Yesterday, somebody donated one million from the United States. I don't know him. Donated one million. And it is interesting to know that by the grace of God, the 21.4 million will be paid so that he can leave hospital when he is held in. I want to thank you all. I want to pray that God will bless you all and that disaster will be far from your families. Imagine when any time I tell Pastor it is well that somebody has donated 1 million, 20,000, he just screams and he's happy. Imagine for 10 years a man had been accidented, a missionary. I will, I will talk to the, I will talk to, to Christians, denominations. They say I criticize church. I criticize church. Ten years, a missionary has had two thigh bones broken, right humerus broken. One of the richest churches in this country. He refused to do anything. And then when I talk, they say I'm criticizing the body of Christ. I'm just saying the truth. Just saying the truth, I won't mention any person's name, I won't mention denominations because my elder bishop has appealed to me, shouldn't mention any person's name, and I will stick to that. But I want to read from Matthew 23, verse 23. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees about tithe, that the tithe meat coming the tiniest vegetables but they have neglected the weightier matters that they should have concentrated on justice mercy and uh, faith instead of concentrating on tight alone let me stay up front state up front that was before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you want to pay tithes, pay. It's for your own good. 
If you don't want to pay, don't pay. The just shall live by his faith, not the faith of a general overseer. Shall live by his faith. So this over, over emphasis on tight, 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 money, 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 is making us neglect the weightier matters. What are the weightier matters? The weightier matters are dispensational. What mattered in the time of Jesus Christ might not be the weighty matters now. Number one, particularly in Nigeria, we are now the poverty capital of the world. Poverty capital of the world. Many more people are sleeping into poverty. I went to preach in a church last Sunday and as I was coming out, I saw a woman with the child had koshoko, malnutrition. And every person is walking past, but they, don't, they didn't notice that. And I told the, the pastor that invited me to please ensure they take care of that child and that woman and find out why that child is malnourished. The federal government just launched a program, 774, to, to, um, to confront the issue of malnutrition in Nigeria so that there might be food in the storehouse was the purpose of the tithe. There's so much hunger in this land, so much hunger in this land, so much poverty in this land, so much distress in this land. Those are the issues we should be addressing. And I gave an example of the Newi Diocese of the Anglican Church. They have farms. They have farms all over uh, Newi area. And they sell their rice cheaper than other people. They have uh, cucumbers, vegetables, fish, everything. They sell. They even distribute um, petroleum products to their uh, members, the, the public, during some particular periods. So the church should be addressing these issues. Issues of poverty. Issues of corruption in the government. Ironically, most people can't talk because their mouths are filled with meat, poisoned meat from politicians. So they can't talk. I know what I am losing by doing what I am doing. I can have gifts and whatever from government. I can. But my country is dying. My people are dying. And the church is supposed to be the conscience of a nation. Desmond Tutu spoke up. Cardinal Sin in Manila spoke up against Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos. Uh, Sister Teresa Mary in Calcutta acted. So the problem of hunger, problem of poverty, problem of corruption, we're not talking about them. We're just ignoring them and concentrating on tight, tight, tight. Let me tell you something. After the French helped the Americans during the American Revolution to gain independence, they built the Statue of Liberty. But after that, there was a poor grain harvest in France. And there was poverty. And the abbots and the bishops were talking tight, 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 tight. They were emphasizing that they demanded more from the people. I have heard people say that when your economy is down, that's why you should give more. You can prove it biblically, like the woman with the Elisha and uh, the Elijah, the woman that wanted to eat her last meal before dying. True, but you are not Elijah. <laughs> you, don't, you are not Elijah. And that, is, that, that dispensation is different. Gary is not expanding. Floor is not expanding. So we must work with dispensational reality. 
And the abbots and the bishops kept putting pressure on the French people and the government, the king was negligent. That was why there was the French Revolution. And that's why France is not as religious as one would have expected. That is where we might be heading to if we don't pay attention to the weightier matters. Number two, because I mentor youths, I am in the streets. I know their lingo. I know what they consume. I know their disposition. If you know the plans to destroy our children through drug addiction, you will be amazed. If you have been following the news of seizures of, uh, of um, loud um, ca Canadian uh, marijuana, if you have been following the seizures of codeine, the seizures of uh, Boromiri, the seizures of uh, all kinds of drugs, if you go to the refuse bin of a hotel, just go, I've gone, I've gone to a refuse bin of a hotel, you will see bottles of codeine, bottles of codeine, uh, cough syrup with codeine, bottles, several of them. I was shocked. In, I went to a hotel. I went to the dustbin and uh, the refuse bin and I saw bottles of codeine. In the street corners of most towns, people are selling drugs. Tragically, these people are arrested. The drug dealers are arrested and um, within a few days, they are back. They pay money and they are brought back. People who are, who are involved know what I'm saying. So, I met a psychiatric nurse, a nurse who works in a, rehab, a rehabilitation center in one of the big hospitals in this country. He said that children are being brought from overseas to be rehabilitated in Nigeria. One of the things we are going to, problems we are going to have is drug addiction, the consequences on our society. Going to range from buying people, boofing people, to forcefully getting into females or males. Drug addiction. I have somebody, a nephew, who was into internet fraud and he was sleeping in hotels with women. I was told about 250 million passed through his hands. Today, he's mentally disturbed in a village. One day he went and gave a knock to his father. He's there. So we're going to have an epidemic of drug addiction, like as it is in the United States. An epidemic of drug addiction. As it is in several nations, drug addiction. The church is not talking about that. The society is not talking about that. We are not preparing rehabilitation centers. If our parents are looking, I, I, I've heard of pastors' children, big general overseers' children that are drug addicts and they are in private rehabilitation centers in Europe. The next issue is cultism. In primary schools, you have cults. In our streets, you have cults. If you watch on the internet, a lot of the musicians that are singing, prominent musicians, are in different courts. And your children listen to this music and they are influenced by them. A court from Nigeria, the members were arrested all over the world for criminality, cultism. In fact, in some states, some states, the House of Assembly is majority Cultis. Cultism is eating to the very, into the very fabric of our society. And we are not preaching about that. We are not saying anything about that. The next thing is promiscuity. If you go, I, when I go, I, I hardly go out. But when I go out, I come back sick. When you see these small girls with pins in their nostrils, you see some of them, they open their bellies, their, their navel, you see a, a, a ring, a pin, their tongue pins, 
in Ogili here, where I live, which is a small suburban town, you will see these hookup girls, these commercial sex workers, young girls, but looking tattered and haggard all over the place, all over. If you go out at night, they hang around hotels around here, all over the place, all over the place. Some of your children you think are in university, they are in the streets, they are following men. In fact, I was told there are some hotels in one town, they've removed the wooden beds. They, they now made concrete beds. I've slept in one, one of such beds in a hotel because these beds are broken by overactivity, over kurukere uh, and knocking. So we're not addressing the issue of promiscuity in our country. We're not addressing the issue of poverty. We're not addressing the issue of hunger. We're not addressing, as a people, the, the issue of banditry, insecurity. It is tight, 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 tight. When a truth is stretched too far, it becomes a fallacy. I am not attacking the body of Christ. All I am saying, let's take up more responsibilities. Let's be more focused on the people rather than their pockets. When the people are raised, they will bring money. My archbishop said, feed a cow before you milk a cow. So, our churches need to face the weightier matters. The weightier matters of injustice in this country. Somebody just did a skit, took a bath inside a, po a pond in his street. He was arrested. Why? Why? He didn't abuse any person. He was arrested. It's a form of protest. You will not see any pastor you will not see any bishop. You will not see any Christian apart from the journalists and the content creators that will come out like Reverend Jesse Jackson came out when uh, the, this seamstress was arrested and that led to the uh, bus boycott in uh, Alabama. That led to the human rights movement. That eventually led to Barack Obama becoming president of the United States. There are weightier issues in this country and in Africa. If all these are prayer, 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 giving, 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 shouting, shouting, deliverance, demon, blah, blah, blah. If they are very effective, Africa will have developed more than this. We owe 